Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here, and welcome to Thanksgiving Eve. This is the day where I created a show a couple of years ago where most of us are probably bored in our office, starting to click on Black Friday deals and stuff like that because. Black Friday starts so early these days. And I thought, let me do a show where we can talk about gadgets and gifts and things like that. And maybe I can use it as a way to have some of you support the show. So that's what we're doing today. I thank you for joining us. If you're in the office and skipping work, yay. If you are at home or in the car traveling already, I hope that you... Uh, have a good trip and have a safe holiday. So that is what today is. So I do need to let everybody know as we start off the show here that this show, we're going to have links to products. Most of the products we have either used or own. Some of them, maybe not. We've either talked about them or sharing them. Some of those will have links either in the show uh, today in the YouTube or Facebook groups uh, or on the show page when you go to click on them. And some of them are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase using that link, we may get a little bit of commission. That's what helps support the show. So I hope that you use the links that we provide and uh, you don't have to spend any more money to do so. That is just a benefit of being an affiliate through Amazon or some of the other affiliate programs. So just the disclaimer ahead of time that that's how things will be going. Now, I will say that whatever pricing you might see is not guaranteed. We're just hopping onto the web page to see what they are. So that's what the prices are now. Uncle Marv is not guaranteeing you the lowest price deal or anything like that. But we are going to talk about what's out there, what you may be thinking of getting for your friends, loved ones, coworkers and might have some tips on how to make Black Friday shopping easier. So that's what we're going to do today. If you've seen the promo, do you see that my good friend Eric Pento will be joining me again? He will be that uh, on the show a little bit later. I have a new friend to the show, Aaron Lawrence, that'll be coming on. And we have uh, Dan Clipley from Net Ally because they are the sponsor. And I got a new toy. So we are going to be talking about that. This is the AirCheck G3, and this is the newest in the network handheld testing tools that will go out and test, analyze, and even help you survey wireless networks for clients. So we'll be talking about that a little bit later in the show. And the reason it's so shiny, folks, I literally got this yesterday, and we'll be talking about that uh, real soon. Now, to tell you what you're going to be supporting, so most of you know me as host of the IT Business Podcast. That is the tech show where we provide products, stories, and tips for IT service providers and professionals on how to run their business better, smarter, and faster. We talk to vendors and, and do a whole bunch of things like that. Some of you know me as just simply Uncle Mar from high school days, college days, junior achievement days, years of darkness days, back to the beach days, all of those types of things. So this is a combined show so that all of my friends from all walks of life can join in and see what's out there for Black Friday. So I've got the two shows, itbusinesspodcast.com and unclemarv.com. You can go to either of those pages and click on the Amazon link there to support the page, uh, to support the podcast. Or, of course, you can just simply uh, click on any of the links that we have here, and it will do the same thing. And I've just been handed my notes, and now I can talk a little bit more coherently about what we have going on today. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. We are on tap, and as I mentioned, I have a new friend to the show, and she is a tech blogger. She is, in my opinion, a YouTube celebrity. She is always talking about 
not just gadgets, but things for the home and things that you may want to know about. And she will do all the testing and reviewing for you. I am talking about Erin Lawrence from Tech Gadgets Canada. Erin, how are you? Marv, I'm fantastic. I'm so glad to be here. Well, thank you for coming on and thank you for you know stepping out on the limb. I know this is a new endeavor for you and an unknown as who is this Uncle Marv guy reaching out to. But I've, I've seen you out and about. I've seen you on some other podcasts. Uh, I've seen your YouTube channel. And I've even purchased some of the things that you reviewed, although I purchased them before you reviewed them. Oh, I should be consulting you then for some review <laughs> advice. Uh, so let's explain a little bit. <laughs> you notice I skipped right on over that. because <laughs> <laughs> I am not the home gadget geek type person. Um, <laughs> we, we have very few items in our home. As a matter of fact, do you see that black thing behind me? I do. It looks like an Amazon Echo. So for those of you that are listening to the audio version, I am pointing to the original big black thing that Amazon sold that you could say, hey, Amazon, or the other ladies. Don't, don't say it, Marv. You'll set off it, everyone's oh, it, echo. It, it, it's been <laughs> on for like two years. <laughs> It's a prop. That's even it better. It is a prop now. <laughs> uh, so yes, for those of you that do know, I did purchase that. I don't know. It's it's pre-COVID. So we're going back a few years. And I thought, ooh, maybe I'll listen to it. And didn't like it at the house. It wasn't my cup of tea. So I brought it to the office and thought, I just have it sitting around and maybe I'll use it and play my, my music, listen to my radio show. I, I listened to Jim Rome's uh, sports talk show. And when I found out that all of the all of the sites were listening, you know, the Facebook and the Google and all these other, I'm like, I don't want them listening to me. So I unplugged. And in fact, I don't even know where the power cord is. <laughs> That'll make it a little harder to use it, Marv. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. So Aaron, you have been doing your stuff on YouTube for quite a while. Uh, you do the Tech Gadgets Canada. You have your Aaron TV uh, that you do. You you are a blogger. You will, you review for a lot of places. Uh, exactly how long have you been doing this? Gosh, I think I've been blogging since about 2016 or so. I started okay. um, reviewing products for Best Buy and started my YouTube channel shortly after that, just as a place to sort of put some content about all these things I was reviewing. Never really thought that anyone would want to watch it. And when I saw how fast the channel was growing and how many people actually seemed interested in these reviews, I thought, wow, this is this is really cool. There's really people out there that need this information. And so I started putting a lot more work into it and it's just grown from there. Now, Tech Gadgets Canada is your side gig. It's not your day job. So were you doing the reviews for Best Buy as part of your day job or was it something you had started doing as a geeky side deal? It was a geeky side deal. Exactly. It was just something I enjoyed and I had some spare time and the the day job I had at that time uh, started very early in the morning. So I would get home around noon or one o'clock and wonder what to do with myself for the rest of the day. So I started freelancing at, a, at about that time and picked up writing gigs and blogging gigs. And, and I really liked it. I really started to enjoy it. And that's when I was building the YouTube channel. And I found, you know, it filled my spare time quite nicely. And I really appreciated hearing from people through the YouTube channel and through the blog, um, which I started sort of shortly after that, um, that it was that it was helpful to them. And I ended up starting my blog because I started getting companies emailing me and asking me to review their products. And the deal I had with Best Buy at the time was if the product wasn't sold at Best Buy, we couldn't review it for Best mm -hmm. Buy, which makes total sense. So I thought, hmm, well, I could start my own blog and review some of these devices because some of them are really cool and interesting. So I started my blog and started placing other review content there and doing more stuff on the YouTube channel. And I'd say the rest is history, but that makes it sound like it's over. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's beginning, over. Marv. Yes, yes. Now, were you always uh, a little geeky person interested in this type of stuff or... How did, it, how did it start? 
if you had asked me in my younger days, if I was always a geeky person, I would have said absolutely not. And how dare you? But as I've gotten older, I realized I'm really interested in science, in technology, in things like geology and gemology. And I started to sort of realize that though, though I don't think I'm smart enough to have any of those as a career, I'm really interested in those subjects. So that's when I wanted to start learning more and more. The other thing I really realized is that when it comes to technology and even simple things like Microsoft Word, for example, there's so many people out there, especially older people, who just haven't learned how to operate these things correctly. They're mystified by the technology. And as a result, they almost become afraid of it. So I looked at that and I thought, you know what? I never want to be that person who needs to call up someone younger to say, hey, can you help me fix my phone or my laptop? So I just made sure to always keep learning and always be on top of technology and current things. And that dovetailed really nicely with the blog and the YouTube channel and the gadgets and and all this new technology as it comes out. Interesting. Now, I was going to start asking you about things of how you started to pick your products, but we'll get into that a little bit later. I do want to focus on the fact that you are doing a top 10 list of your gadgets uh, in this year, obviously for 2022. Now, I tried to go back and see if you had done this before, and I, I think I just ran out of time where I didn't see them. But how long have you been doing a top 10 list? I'm pretty sure I've done one. See, that's a great question. I think I've done one for the last two years. This would be the third year. Okay. It's been intermittent, I'll say, because um, I tend to focus on those single reviews and just getting really in-depth with those products. So I've been a bit probably lazy about doing things like the top 10 list. But I thought this year, you know what, there were so many great gadgets that I had the opportunity to review and some technology which really impressed me. So I thought this is this is the year to pick this back up. All right. And I've already put in the chat, folks, the link to her top 10 list. And for if you're not listening and you want to hop on real quick, well, that's I didn't say that properly. <laughs> if, if you are listening, you missed the live show. And if you're watching the live show, I've put them. We are broadcasting on many different formats today. Normally, I am on YouTube and the Facebook. But we are also going out to Twitch today. My very first uh, live show on Twitch. I have no idea how that will go. And I have no idea if they can see the chat or if I can see theirs. But I've just put her list in all four chats. So if you have questions or comments throughout the show, uh, go ahead and put them there and we'll try to answer them. But for now, you can go there and click on the link and you'll see her list of the top 10 gadgets of 2022. Now, I know that before when we chatted and I asked you, have you used all of these products? And you actually said yes. I have. You own most of them. I do. I think, yeah, I, I'm looking at a quick note here on the top 10 and I do own them all. Yes. A couple okay. of them I've borrowed. I'm looking. Two two of them I've borrowed. Three of them. The rest the rest I own. Okay. I'm going to do a side note here. And the way that you said bo borrowed. <laughs> so you My are Canadian accent. <laughs> well, Burrow. Don't get me to say about. Oh, I'm not even going to go there. So Burrow reminds everybody down here of Joe Burrow, the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. So. Uh, they went through a whole thing of that. So you are from Canada. I'm assuming you've been there most of your life, right? I have, yeah. Born and raised in Canada. I've lived all across the country. I'm currently living in Calgary, Alberta, which is in the frigid western side of Canada. Oh, you're on the other side of Canada, the one that most the Americans other side. know about. That's right. We're sort of, they know Vancouver and then they know Toronto. I'm in the part in the middle between them. Well, we know Toronto, um, and then we know Quebec because I'm here in Florida, and all your license plates start to flock down here about this time of year. Absolutely, they do. Um, all right, so let's start with the number one thing on your list, and I'm going to go ahead and throw a quick link in. Uh, the first thing on your list is, ooh, that's the wrong link I put in there. So if you're looking at that in the chat right now, it's an ugly it's an ugly uh, link. And as a matter of fact, it doesn't come up on some of them. So 
I'll do a new one here. But the first thing on your list, a Samsung 55-inch frame TV. That caught my eye because we just purchased a TV about four months ago. It was a Samsung. It was 75-inch. And it was QLED. But it was not this thing you called the frame. So I want to ask you, is this first on your list because you love it? Or is number even a consideration in the list? It's it's definitely the first thing on the list because I love it. This is the second frame TV I've owned. I just think it's an amazing concept and it's a wonderful TV. So this device is a 4K TV and it comes in sizes from, I think they have down to 43 inches up to probably 80 or 85 inches now. But the concept of this TV is it's designed to hide in plain sight. So when the TV isn't being used for watching TV or movies, it goes into sort of this, calling it a screensaver mode would really be a disservice because we're all familiar with screensavers on computers and those really cruddy moving graphics and bright glaring screen. The colored arrows that go up and down. <laughs> That's the one I'm thinking of. Slowly moving across the screen. The, the frame TV is not that in any way. What it does is it displays what Samsung calls gallery quality art. So it will display paintings or photography, but it looks realistic. So the concept of this TV is the way the light exists behind the display panel. It's it's easy to believe that it's actually a piece of art because it doesn't have that bright TV glare. It has a light sensor in it, which will adapt the brightness of the screen to the ambient light in the room. So if your room is a bit brighter, it will get a bit brighter to compensate. But if it's, you know, dark and evening in your house, it's not going to be this flashing TV. The art is beautiful. The photography is stunning. There's all kinds of different styles for everyone. And what using this art mode does is it lets the TV exist in a room where you might not otherwise want to put a TV. Okay. And as you're speaking, I just put up a video. So if you are watching the show, uh, we are showing the TV that literally, if you put it on the wall, looks like a picture. Yeah, it's it's fantastic the way it will just fade into the background. So one of the things, I, I never wanted a TV in our main living room just because we have a, a TV room and a place where we can go. But my husband really wanted to watch baseball in the summertime. You know, when the light is nice and we're sitting upstairs and it's bright and sunny and baseball is on. So we were talking about getting a TV in the living room and I just thought, you know what, I just don't want that that black hole that, you know, when TVs are turned off, they turn into this giant black hole that just draws your eye. So I started looking around and it was about this time Samsung came out with this concept of the frame TV. And like I said, it's just designed to blend in until you hit that button to turn the TV on. And then you've got a great quality 4k TV. Mm. Now I saw from the website and I'll have the link to that in the show notes as well. I mean, and it's showing right on this, 1,600 works of art. Yes. So yeah. now is it something where you can put it on to a static picture or can it literally rotate like those uh, those small picture frames that you can buy and you throw your pictures on? Great question. You can do all of the above. So you can keep it on one painting or one work of art. And there are thousands of them available in what Samsung calls its art store. You can also put your own photos or artwork. So if you're a photographer or an artist and you want to display one of your own canvases on this TV, you can simply upload it through Samsung's app and it'll appear on the TV. The other thing they have is uh, it's called ambient mode. And these are sort of moving or subtle motion images. So if you think of um, the image of a window, for example, with the curtains rustling gently in the breeze, while a branch, you know, on a tree outside sort of waves in the wind. They have those kind of artworks too. And sometimes that's really nice because especially if you live in a small place, if you can open up your space with 
you know, a, another window for all intents and purposes. It's a great way to do that. Nice. Now, let me go back and ask because, you know, you and your husband were talking about how to use the space. Is your living room kind of like your hosting space when people come over? And that's why you didn't want a big black screen when you're not using it sitting in there. Exactly. It's we have sort of an open concept kitchen living room and that is our main entertaining area. And you know, the other thing about a TV tends to be you need a piece of furniture to put it on and it takes up a lot of space. And the other appealing thing that I found about the frame TV is that it has this I think Samsung still calls it the no gap wall mount but the television will hang on your wall just like a painting. So it's not as though you've got to get one of those metal wall mounts and then attach it to the wall mount. And then it's on this articulating arm and you're going to, you know, move it around and stuff the way it hangs, it's completely flat. So it legitimately looks like it's art hanging on your wall. And then they went and added different styles of, you know, wood frames or painted frames or bezels for the TV that let you customize it. So if you've got sort of a gallery wall in your living space, you can actually choose a frame or an edge for this TV that'll help it blend into the art you already have hanging in your house. So it really creates this illusion of just being art in the house. And I can tell you from experience, I've had so many people like you said, Marv, be hanging out, you know, we're in the living room, I'm entertaining, we're having a glass of wine. And after an hour or two hours, somebody will turn around and go, is there any chance that is a TV? And I'll grab the remote control and turn it on. And they're blown away every time. Okay, so I was going to ask you, does anybody actually notice it and think that it's a TV? Because the video showed that you can get all different types of frames that really make it look like a picture. So yeah. I yeah. have to imagine. Leg legitimately have fooled so many people, so many people, and they're just, they're blown away. All right. Now, what type of art are you putting on there? Is it art art or are you putting your pictures up there? I like to change it up. I try and change it up uh, every week. So I have put my own photographs. If I've taken a really nice vacation photograph, I've I've put some of those up. The TV has some really great sort of current modern artworks. We live in a bit of a mid-century home, so sometimes it's nice to have some more mid-century styled art on the wall. I also really like this week I have uh, some of the ambient mode art up. And what it is is it's an architectural thing. I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like you were zooming in slowly on a really cool building and then sort of the building just you know, disappears and then a different building comes in, but it's very, very subtle. So you'd have to be sitting there for, you know, five minutes to even detect that it's actually moving. And every now and then a plane in the sky will go by. So it's just, it's just very, very subtle. It's just something really nice to look at. And it adds a lot to the room for me. All right. Now, was that something that you knew when you did the first preview and you were able to show or is that something you found out a little bit after the road? Like, oh, I didn't know it could do that. No, I did know about that. Samsung was really strong in its marketing about that. And that's how they're billing this TV is, um, you know, if, if you don't want a TV in your room because you don't want that, you know, that hole in your decor, this is the one to get. So I was familiar with the concept. But before I tried the first version in, I think that was 2018 or so, I was really skeptical that it wouldn't be anything more than a TV with a screensaver. And I've certainly reviewed other televisions. Um, I don't want to knock on LG, but LG has a similar concept with one of its TVs. But their art mode does actually look like a screensaver. It's got that bright, shiny screen. It's got the really bright light because, you know, that's the technology they've included in their television to make it super bright for watching movies and playing games. But it's not conducive to that art mode so much. Right. So I've, I've seen the competitors and tried them. And for me, nothing beats the concept of this one. And that's, that's why it's my top pick. All right. And it is a true 4K QLED television with vibrant picture. So the, the the TV that we got is just phenomenal. So 
I wish we'd have known the, about the frame concept when we got our, although it probably had. Is it just me, Marv? We seem to have lost Marv. I guess I could keep talking about the Samsung Frame TV if it's just me. Let's see. Marv's back. So if you've paid any bit of attention to the tech in my area, Comcast, that claims itself to be the most reliable and fastest internet, isn't. <laughs> 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 um, and on that, uh, sorry about that, folks, but it happens live internet, live TV. Yep. I, so, I entertained your audience while you were gone, Marv. Oh, well, good, good. Did you redirect them all to your site? And <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to start telling jokes if I ran out of things to say about the frame TV, but fortunately, you're back. I'm back. All right. Well, uh, why don't we do this? Because we're coming up on a break and I want to get our sponsor in. So I'm going to put you back in the green room and uh, I'll have you back because we have more to chat about, about the top 10 list and about uh, Aaron Lawrence TV. Definitely. We'll see you soon, Marv. All right. We will see you soon, folks. Uh, going to play just a quick little video here and we'll do the swap. Ready to be a boss? Test, survey, troubleshoot, and map Wi-Fi networks with the AirCheck G3 wireless analyzer. Super fast, portable, rugged, and for any skill level. Ready to add some cool to your kit? Check us out at netally.com forward slash aircheck. All right, we are back with my guy, Dan Klimke from NetAlly. Dan, how are you? Great, thank you. Thanks for having uh, us. Doing pretty good, pretty good. I don't know if you can turn your volume up, but you may want to do that just a touch. I can probably clean it up in post, but I don't want you to. I don't want people to miss a single word. Well, hopefully, getting the mic uh, a little closer helps a bit. All right, that. Uh, I think you may be talking into your camera microphone, so I don't know. While you're checking that out, I want to show you. I did get it. Hey, there it is. Great. This. This came in late last night and is the new AirCheck 3. In fact, I haven't even turned it on because I didn't want it to be stuck at a registration screen. <laughs> uh, when I got that, it. Yeah. And I didn't realize, but this nice little uh, backpack that it comes in. Yeah, that's something new we put in place a little bit earlier this, uh, this year. A uh, little sling pack that makes it really handy to uh, carry the tool with you on the go. Okay. So first, let me say thank you uh, once again to you and NetAlly for sponsoring the podcast. You guys have helped to uh, allow me to, to do a lot of these shows. Uh, you've also furnished my business with these tools that have allowed me to go out and, and make some good money. Awesome. And taking okay. care of cable situations and analyzing networks and stuff. Um, and, you know, ever since... It's been a few iterations of the product, but I, I started back when it was Fluke and through all the changes and you guys have stuck with me. So I appreciate that and want to want to say thank you. Hey, you're most welcome. It's been great working with you. All right. So let's first start with the questions that everybody's going to ask. What makes this so much better than the G2? Okay, sure. And I know that most of the features are enhanced. They come out of the, the Etherscope and, of course... Wi-Fi 6, which is is out there now. Yep. So what are some things people need to know? Yeah, well, that is the big, big difference between the AirCheck G2 and the AirCheck G3 is the addition of the Wi-Fi 6 technology to the product. Uh, and then, so that's Wi-Fi 6 wherever it exists, whether that's in the 2.4 gigahertz band, 5 gigahertz, but also the new radio is a 6 gigahertz radio. So we have the 6E or or that extended range, so we can also handle the latest APs that have the, uh, the six gigahertz radio capability. So that, of course, is the biggest difference. But also, I think one of the things that, um, for those who are familiar with our tools, you know, we 
we've come up with this system of having a, a series of standardized apps, our, our own apps using our own hardware. So if you're used to using one of our tools like an Etherscope, you pick up an air check, you're using effectively the same apps. So training is easy, transferring from one tool to another easy. Um, and just in general, a lot of added power uh, in the AirCheck G3. The other feature that is new to the Wi-Fi test instrument is discovery. Uh, now, discovery means you can actually not just listen to the devices that are transmitting in the air, but we can actually start talking to your infrastructure and pulling information about who else is on this network, where they connected, and actually draw a topology map of the wired network as well as the Wi-Fi network. So a lot of great advances uh, in the latest technology. All right. So I just turned mine on. Hey, yeah, there we are. Trying to do it without the glare. Yeah. But it's the familiar screen with uh, – so, yeah, discovery on the air check. Pretty Got nice. It. Now, if I can share my screen into the show, I can actually show what you can do with that. Is that all right? Sure. Yeah, go ahead and put that in there, and I'll throw that up. And while you're doing that, oh, yep, here comes my Ally Care activation code. So we'll have to we'll have to talk about that. There you go. And uh, so the, the good thing while you're putting that in there, so the auto test, obviously, for people to be able to test and verify, you know, that the Wi-Fi is working. But uh, the Wi-Fi air, you know, air analyzer, so knowing, uh, you know, everything that's around us. And there on the screen uh, looks like the result of a auto test. That's exactly. That's an auto test results screen. This is a uh, unit that we have in a test network here in our Colorado Springs network. So that's the auto test. And I'll just click back to the home screen so you can see all the different apps. Uh, in auto test too, just to point out a couple of the other capabilities, uh, we have in here also a test called the air quality profile. I always like to point that out because usually when a technician or engineer has to troubleshoot a problem and people are complaining about Wi-Fi, you need to get a real quick look at, well, what's happening on the network right now? And that's what Air Quality Profile does. It actually quickly goes through and scans all of the channel and tells you, are you, do you have any problems with excessive utilization? Do you have co-channel interference? Do you have adjacent channel interference? Uh, and, and, see, and are we exceeding any of the thresholds that might make those problems uh, be the source of uh, the issues that your users might be experiencing. So uh, Wi-Fi auto test and the air quality test, fantastic uh, capabilities. But I want to drill into that uh, discovery capability. So if I click in here, you can actually see all of the devices that we've heard through the air listening on Wi-Fi, but also into my wired network, including my uh, DNS servers, my switches, my APs, and the other servers that I happen to have on the network. And then going over to Link Live, which is our cloud service, where all of the test results get uploaded into the cloud, this is where we can actually draw the, uh, automatically draw the documentation or the, the topology map of that network, including my wired infrastructure and APs and the devices that are connected to the APs. So this is another key difference between the AirCheck G2 and the AirCheck G3, You're having that ability to not only discover your network, but, but to actually draw a topology diagram to know who's connected where. All right, so I just put uh, a link to the Amazon page in the show there. And let me actually see if I can share this as well. Um, share screen. Yeah, folks, we are doing this live, <laughs> as you can see. And screen two, I'll just do that. And there it is. So that is it on Amazon. It is in stock. This Now, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. This just got officially released on November 8th. Yeah, that's right. We started talking about it uh, back in July uh, to let people know that it was coming. And November 8th is when it became available uh, broadly in the market from all of our partners like, uh, like Amazon. All right, so it is available now. I, Like I said, I got mine literally yesterday, and it will be available there. Of course, if you can't get it through Amazon or you'd like to contact me, we do have resources where we can get you uh, the AirCheck G3 or any of the NetAlly products uh, through my, my day job there. So that is it, folks, the AirCheck G3. Now, 
Dan, I've seen this in a couple of places. Some some places it's just the G3, and others it's the G3 Pro. Are there two different models? Or oh, is it okay, yeah, good question. Now, it, the model that we have released is a G3 Pro. So okay. maybe in some places they've shortened it, just call it the AirCheck G3, but it is the AirCheck G3 Pro. Uh, that is the one that has all of these cool capabilities, including the ability to site, do site surveys uh, and to do that network discovery as well as all the Wi-Fi diagnostics. Right. So so I have the Pro. You got the Pro. I got the Pro. A Pro's Pro for a Pro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, Dan, um, before we go, uh, we just had a little segment on here, but is there anything else in NetAlly land that uh, is newsworthy that we should mention? Um, how are things? Well, you know, this is the biggest news uh, with the AirTech G3 coming out. Uh, we're always making enhancements to our Link Live cloud service. That's where you saw that topology map being drawn. Uh, our engineers are constantly coming up with new ways to make jobs of network professionals easier. Uh, and a lot of that happens in Link Live because creating documentation tends to be a pain, uh, tends to be difficult when you have to do it manually. And so they're always looking for ways to automate the process of collecting data with the handheld tools and then using that to create automatic documentation about your network. So I'd say always keep looking for those enhancements in Link Live, and there's more to come in 2023. All right, Dan, I appreciate you uh, taking a few minutes to hang out with us as our sponsor. And again, thank you very much. I'll look forward to 2023 doing some great things. You got it. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next year. All righty, folks. Uh, we'll be right back. All right, we are back with Erin Lawrence from Tech Gadgets Canada. Hello Hi. again, Marv. Hello again. All right, now you didn't go and tweak your top 10 list while we were. Oh, we I did that. not, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe, maybe next year I could do a top 20, though. A top 20. A top 20. We'll have to make the show longer then. Well, all right. Uh, we've got, we've got we'll, time to plan. Assuming you'll come back. <laughs> I'd love to. Um, in the meantime, so let's go back. So Tech Gadgets Canada and your YouTube channel. So those are separate. And you had mentioned that when you were doing this stuff for Best Buy, that you were starting, you know, the separate blog so you could do those other products and stuff. So are they completely separate? No, they're actually, I would say they kind of go hand in hand. They're yin, yin and yang. Yin and yang, yin and yang. Uh, no, because they 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 work together. So the blog and the website, which is techgadgetscanada.com, is where I post written uh, articles about all of these gadgets and the full reviews. And we've got some additional features there on the website. We put together sort of a pros and cons list of some of these gadgets. Um, we have easily accessible links if people want to take a look and shop. The uh, the YouTube channel, on the other hand, is more, I like to call it more show and tell. So it's one thing for me to talk about the Samsung Frame TV like we did in our last segment, but it's a whole other thing for you to be able to see how it actually works and to take a look at that video quality and to see that art mode in use in my home. So that's what the YouTube channel is designed to do is to give you that that visual representation and to really show my experience with these products. And I really hope that it gives people a sense of how these gadgets might operate in their own homes. All right. So I have the link to that as well in the show notes, folks, that uh, you can go there and see Erin in all her glory. <laughs> you called me a celebrity earlier, Marv. I don't know about that. I Listen. Just about anybody on YouTube that has a lot of subscribers, a lot of videos, 
and is really out there and noticeable. To me, it's a celebrity. I'm just getting started in this YouTube thing. And it's more like a side gig to the side gig. Yes. So yep. I've got to work, I've got to work up to it. Well, and it does take quite a long time to build up an audience on YouTube. I mean, there are certainly people that can and do go viral and get a million subscribers overnight. But I'm I'm more the slow mountain climbing type. I've been pecking away at building building an audience and making friends and and you know hopefully helping people out over quite a number of years. So uh, it's been working for me, and I've been able to see that steady progress. and And people keep coming back for more, and we get more subscribers every month. So I that's what keeps me going. All right. Well. I'll have to make out some time because I know that doing videos takes a lot of work. And like me, I just, whatever we do here, including the Comcastic dropout, that's what goes up on the screen. I don't edit. Absolutely. Uh, well, and you're right about video being a whole nother game. I mean, I probably spend several hours on each video in addition to the time that I would spend testing a gadget and, you know, using it day to day and then shooting some video and then putting together, you know, I call it a script. I come from the TV world. That's a bit of my background. Um, so I'll put together a script so that all my thoughts are together in one place and concise and they make sense. And I'm not just rambling. Hmm. So we'll talk about that. I'm going to see if I can get you on another show and we can really dive into that, but let's just uh, do what the, the viewers are here to see. And that is to talk about your top 10 list and some gadgets here. Now, something else that I noticed on your list was a coffee maker that when I looked at it, eh, didn't really catch my attention at first until I saw the price tag. Absolutely. And so you're talking about the Philips 4300, the yes. super automatic espresso maker. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and start the video now. And... Just so you know, I took your video and I edited it. <laughs> Excellent. See? Oh, it it wasn't so longer. bad, was it? It took a little longer than I was hoping <laughs> for. But this thing, oh my goodness gracious. So I actually, this was something where I also had purchased earlier in the year, a Keurig Duo Plus, which I thought was pretty cool. But this thing, I mean, tell us about this thing. When it says automatic, it looks it like it's you know, start to finish automatic. It is. It's absolutely true. Um, so this is what's called a super automatic espresso machine. And the concept here is that, you know, for anyone who's ever been to Starbucks or their local coffee shop and you've got the barista and they extract the espresso and then they blend it with the milk and, you know, that can take time. And certainly if you're doing that manually, it is quite the art. I had a manual espresso machine for a long time and the espresso you get out of it can change on a day-to-day -day basis based on how humid it is, if it's raining, if it's too cold, if your beans weren't roasted correctly that batch. So it can be a very finicky process. A lot of people really love it. And I did like it for a while. But, you know, some days you just want to wake up and you just need that caffeine. So I started researching these super automatic espresso machines. And what they will do is take care of all of the tasks related to your espresso or your espresso drink or your latte for you. So that's everything from grinding the beans to tamping the espresso down to doing that high pressure extraction and then even cleaning up after itself. And of course, it will also handle steaming the milk for you as well. So it's everything in one medium-sized package. That to me sounds like work. <laughs> even though you didn't think what I said before was work. Well, I mean, all of the stuff you mentioned, it's still, looking at the video, it still looks like work. Well, it may sound like work, but in the end, it's actually not work. What the video was just showing for those who could see it, it's a simple button press. So whatever drink you want, let's say you want, you know, a basic double espresso, push the button and it comes right out of the machine. If you want something like a cappuccino, it's, it's a different button press. And then, you know, you can walk away, come back and you have a full fresh cappuccino just waiting there for you. So it's actually 
quite easy. It's extremely user friendly. This is why I put it on my top 10 list here because it's basically goof proof. You can't make a bad coffee drink using this machine. And that's what I really appreciated about it. But at the same time, if you're one of those coffee people who has to have things a certain way, a certain temperature, a certain volume of espresso, you know, 50 milliliters instead of 60, you can do that with this machine. It'll allow you to customize some of that so that you can have your coffee exactly as you want it. Okay. First of all, if I've got to measure coffee in milliliters. <laughs> some people do, Marv. Some people do. So let me, let me ask this because I like coffee, but if it's got like weird names to it and doesn't sound like <laughs> coffee or if it, when you say something like basic double espresso that doesn't sound so basic so let me ask and and i'm going to try to say this in the nicest way possible <laughs> you, you a coffee snob marv i think i am i okay. think i am i i do like my coffee i'm not Oh, what I'm just going to own it. Yeah, Marv, I'm a coffee snob. <laughs> I, I order my coffee beans from California up here to Canada. There's a great cafe in Los Angeles. And of all the coffee I've ever drank in my many years on this planet, it's the best. So I have them ship it up to me here in Canada. Okay. So let me kind of ease this for you. So I tried to be. Uh -huh. And we went through the deal where I wanted to go and buy the beans. Now, I didn't have them shipped. I just went to Publix, and, you know, <laughs> found the beans that I thought I would like, and I would grind them up and then put them in. And but even that was too much work. So yeah. but I'm a basic coffee guy. Now, for those people, I'm going to start the video over because that was just. We may run out of time, <laughs> but, <laughs> but for, for, you know, so the wife has taken a liking to, uh, what is it? Uh, cafe latte, mm -hmm. which sounds like it's one of those types of drinks, but we still get it in the curate cup. So it's just a, yes. a, you know, press and go type thing. But I have to imagine that to do that is similar to what you're showing uh, in the video where it's pouring the milk for you. It's measuring uh, the multi-step process. Uh, she wants a Keurig two-step machine that does that. And I said, that's too much. But, um, <laughs> well, Keurig actually has some good machines and Nespresso does as well, where, you know, if you want to simplify this process. So for you, Marv, like if, if this seems a bit more, more work than you want to put into your morning coffee, that's totally okay because something like an espresso, and I've reviewed several Nespresso's, they're not on my top 10 list year only because they came out before 2022, but they're fantastically simple and they use those just simple little coffee pods and it's, you know, pop in the pod, close the lid, press the button and you're done. And some of them do have the option for steaming that milk and heating that milk and creating that foam, you know, that would make a really nice latte or a cappuccino. But it is even easier than this because you don't have to go that extra step of adding the beans and maybe adjusting some of your settings. So it's on your list. I assume that you have this at your house. But let me ask, how did you get from just a regular, regular coffee drinker to this? Mm, over many years. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned earlier in our last segment that I worked very early mornings. I used to get up at about 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, that's an unnatural time of day to be starting your work day. So the caffeine definitely helped. And I would always make myself just a regular cup of black drip coffee. And I would take that to work. But once I started working those really early mornings, I found that an espresso shot as soon as I got up kind of helped me get ready for the day and at least get out the door so I could take that black drip coffee to work and finish it off there. All right. So let me, let me stop you there and ask for some clarification because this is where a coffee noob like me doesn't <laughs> understand when you say the shot of espresso really gets me going. Is there really that much difference between a cup of coffee and a shot of espresso? 
I want to say the caffeine in espresso is actually less than the caffeine in drip coffee, I believe. But the thing about an espresso is it's quick to drink. So if you're sleep deprived and you're trying to get ready at, you know, an ungodly hour of the morning, being able to have that quick shot of caffeine because and it cools quicker, too, because it's a smaller volume. Right. So you can have that quick shot. You can drink it quickly and you can get started with your day. I always like to have the, you know, the drip coffee. I'll sit down on the couch and I've got my favorite mug and I'll sip on that over half an hour. And it's a ritual. I don't tend to rush. Um, but that that's how I got on the espresso train. And like I said earlier, I was trying to do it manually. And I just thought some early mornings, you just don't want to be fussing with all the you know, the tamping of the grinds and grinding your own beans and doing all that. And that's where I got to the super espresso or super automatic espresso machines. Okay. Now, do you also do the iced coffee? Every now and then I do, but I find that I don't mind a hot coffee, even on a hot day. I don't, I don't know if I'm abnormal like that or uh, everybody else is with me, but I, I don't mind it so much. I'll do it occasionally. I do the ice Florida. coffee. Occasionally. It's hot all the mm -hmm. time. I drink coffee. <laughs> Yep. Yep. So, all right. So for those of you watching the show, I have put up on the screen my version of the Advanced Coffee Maker, which is the <laughs> Keurig Duo Plus. And we actually purchased this because earlier this year, we were hosting a family a reunion and we were not staying at a hotel where people would be able to run downstairs and get breakfast. We were staying at a townhouse style airbnb so we got five or six rooms in a townhouse condominium type deal and we were responsible for our own meals we had a full kitchen and stuff but we bought this so that we could entertain the group there and it does both the single serving and a carafe so that we can make a pot and have that available, but then still allow for people to do their individual cups. So that was, that was my, that was my step up in the coffee. Great world. option. Great contribution. Yep. All right. So coffee snob, let me ask you, how did you find out about these beans in California? <laughs> I was down on a business trip and ended up at this, it, I'll, I'll tell you what the cafe is. I don't know if we're giving them an unsolicited plug or not. Um, but it's called Earth Cafe. You'll never hear this show. <laughs> well, never know, Mark. Um, it's called Earth Cafe. And I, I had been looking for a place to have breakfast um, where we might be able to spot celebrities. And this place was recommended. So we went and had breakfast there, ordered a coffee. And like I said, it was just the best cup of coffee I had ever drank. So I had one with my breakfast. I took one to go. And then I made our my coworkers come back the next morning because it was so good. And we did actually see a celebrity. So we wanted to come back. Um, and then while I was there on that second day, I purchased a few pounds of beans to to bring home with me. And then I, you know, when I got home and started to run low, I called them up and I said, can you ship to Canada? Because this is this is good. This is great stuff. Wow. Now, do you have just a particular bag that you get all the time or is there an assortment and i guess what flavor family are you are you in great question uh, i'm a dark roast girl and they have two really great dark roast coffees one is called manhattan mud and the other is called old grandpa <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> okay. so the first one i was gonna laugh at yep the second one made me laugh even harder the yes. old grandpa Old grandpa. It's, it's fantastic. Their coffees are great. I've, they make, you know, they've got everything from dark roast to medium and light and everything in between. And they'll do uh, coffee beans or they'll grind it for you, but it's, it's just fantastic quality. I think it's all uh, organic and heirloom. Um, and at, you know, before I knew anything about coffee, I would have said, yeah, whatever, who, who cares, who can be bothered. But, you know, now that I know more about sustainability and and how how good that is for the planet and, and various economies, I thought, well, I can feel good about getting it trucked all the way up to Canada. <laughs> yeah, now that you're a snob, you can uh, do right. that sort of thing. 
All right. So let's move on to your list. I'm going to actually scroll down here. We didn't, I didn't prepare videos for all of these, but there was a, something I noticed. You actually had two different sets of earbuds. So you had the Google Pixel Buds, and then you had the Sony Link Buds. Yes. So how did you get two buds on the list? Well, I use headphones a lot for my all, all of my jobs, my day job, my side hustle, everything I do. So I often need headphones, and I, I have the good fortune of being able to try a whole bunch of them. And what I liked about the Pixel Buds is that they're super easy to use. They don't drop the connection. They're supremely comfortable. Uh, they work with both Android and iPhones. And they're just, Google makes really good products these days. I mean, they've always actually made really good products, but just these are the newest version of their earbuds. And they've got noise canceling. They've got that ambient mode that lets you let some of that noise in. And they're just a fantastic pair of earbuds. And, you know, for all the Android users out there uh, or Google Pixel phone users who are looking for that seamless connectivity experience like the Apple users get with AirPods Pro and an iPhone, that's what you're getting here. Um, and they're just, they're great. I love the new design. They're, they're beautifully designed and they work exactly as they should. So that's how they made it onto the list. And then the Sony Link Buds were a very unique concept that I just thought, I wasn't sure what to expect when I reviewed them, but I saw them, I read about them and I thought, I have to try these because I have to know if they're any good. And the concept with these is they're almost these little loops that tuck into your ear. So they don't go into your ear canal. They sit almost in front of your ear canal. So they're not poking into your ear, which I know a lot of people out there hate. So I thought I have to try these out and see if this actually makes a difference in comfort, if it affects the sound quality, what this is like to wear. And I tried them out and loved them as well. So I put them both on the list. Hmm. Now, how is the actual quality now? And, and I'm going to say this. So I use the Bose sound sport and i have yet to find anything where the sound is as good as those and when i say good there it's a rich sound it's a clear boisterous is not the right word but mm -hmm. it's you, know, you get the highs you get the lows you well get balanced. that you get that bass in them yes. and i'm sorry but i went out and purchased some beats mm -hmm some other stuff that claimed to be just as good and the the sound just didn't just wasn't there sometimes it was airy you know mm -hmm. where i know that they're trying to allow you to be able to hear what's around you and you know not be taken off guard by something or or, or non-attentive so do these have a clear rich vibrant sound in your ear they do, and both of them do, and that's, I mean, that's a major factor for headphones when I'm reviewing them. If they don't sound good or they lean towards the tinny or they, you know, some cheaper headphones can get that, you know, they seem like they have a lot of bass, but it's buzzy. It right. doesn't have that resonance. It's just kind of like, which is, is not pleasant to listen to. So both of these had excellent sound quality and you know, that's a major component. Now, sound quality is also very individual. So I certainly have reviewed headphones that I've said, these are fantastic. They sound amazing. And I'll have people comment on my YouTube channel on Aaron Lawrence TV and say, you know what? I disagree. I, I didn't like the sound. So I took them back. And that just goes to the individual individuality of earphone preferences. Mm, interesting. Now, both of these, I notice also the new trend of earbuds without wires at all, so they don't even rest on your neck like my my Bose Sound Sports do. How are you liking where you're just basically sticking them in like an earwig and, you know, being able to, let me, let me ask it this way. Do you ever lose them? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't yet. Um, both of those, uh, the Sony Link Buds and the Google Pixel Buds Pro, 
have a really good fit and they are customizable to a little extent. They often will come with little silicone um, fins or um, almost Dif like a little silicone ring that right. helps it grip. Are they different sizes to where you can find the one that fits your ear better? Exactly. And most headphone manufacturers, most headphones that I've reviewed, I would say in the last five years, that's universally expected. I don't think anyone would buy a pair of headphones if it didn't come with some degree of customization because all of our ears are are so different. And I've reviewed headphones too where, you know, they're clearly geared at a man's ears perhaps. They're so big in my ear that they're extremely uncomfortable to wear. So, you know, that that might be something that I'm going to knock on for the ladies out there, but someone else might say, "You know what? I've I've got big ears. I need something that size. So it works for them. All right. Very nice. Now, we didn't go over the entire list, so you, but you've got a top 10. And I'm sure there were some favorites that you had to keep off the list. Any that you went back and looked at and said, oh, I wish I'd have put these on instead. Any any gifts oh, like that? Gosh. There's, there's lots of stuff. I mean, I would encourage your audience to head over to techgadgetscanada.com and check out the list. Um, I've reviewed a ton of stuff in the last two years. That's fantastic. Like I said earlier, not everything made it onto this year's list just because it didn't come out in 2022 specifically. Um, but I think most of the favorites are there and included, but I've had the good fortune, Marv, to review dozens of robot vacuums, uh, many smart lights and gosh, even something like a, a cooking robot. So if people are curious about what's out there, if they maybe want to learn a bit more about this technology. Sounds ridiculous. A cooking <laughs> robot. It's a cooking robot. Spoiler right. alert for either our next podcast appearance or for folks to go check out the top 10 list and see because the cooking robot is on there. Um, it's a very intriguing prospect. If you're either not much of a home chef or you maybe don't have the budget to buy a whole bunch of kitchen appliances, this kitchen robot can replace or take the place of I think it's about 20 different kitchen appliances. And I know that sounds like a George Foreman commercial, but it actually works. It actually or, works. I was going to say, it, it started to sound like a George Jetson's, what was the Rosie the robot? Yes. On that show that did all that. But um, this sounds more like one of those countertop, you know, the 15 in one air fryer conduction oven. Exactly. Baker. This, this one has a few more a few more functions. It's, it will blend, it will whip, it will chop, but it will steam, it will cook rice, it will uh, make dough, it does, it will peel potatoes for you. It's, it's quite Stop an amazing it. gadget. It. <laughs> we could do, happen. we could do a whole other show, Marv, on the Thermomix TM6, which is what that kitchen robot is called. We could, we could. All right. Well, Aaron, I know that we're getting to the point in time where I had slotted you for. I will be efforting my next guest, but I don't see him yet. Uh, I am scheduled to take a break here. Now, you didn't say whether you you know, would hang out and watch the show and stuff. Do you want to hang out a little bit longer until that guest comes or do you need to go? Why don't I hang out? I'll save you from having to talk to yourself, Marv. I'm happy to hang out for a few more minutes until your next guest arrives. Okay. Well, why don't we do this? Let me go ahead and play a quick little break here. So that'll give us time to uh, adjust and fix ourselves. Uh, we'll be right back, folks, uh, with Aaron from Tech Gadgets Canada.
Hello, friends. We are back with Uncle Marv's Black Friday preview show. We are airing live Wednesday, November 23rd, Thanksgiving Eve. And this was a day we pitched starting last year because, one, a lot of you were at work and just kind of bored, hanging around, clicking on Black Friday deals. And I was talking with some people and they're like, well, why don't we kind of do a little Zoom thing and talk about, you know, what deals we all like and, you know, would get for somebody. So I turned that into a show. So here we are. This is the show for 2022. And I have Aaron Lawrence from Tech Gadgets Canada on. And uh, we are waiting for Eric Pinto with Sock Solder. Uh, Aaron, how, how have you been enjoying the, the show so far? I've been learning a lot from from you and your audience, and I hope I've been able to share some new gadgets with people, enlighten them about some of the really cool stuff that's out there. All right. So I wanted to ask you earlier, and I'm glad you stayed so I could ask this. Do you get people that suggest things for you to review? I know that you talked about your relationship with Best Buy and 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 some vendors as you started to come on the scene, but do you have listeners and watchers that just will send you stuff and, hey, can you talk about this? I absolutely get suggestions all the time on um, Aaron Lawrence TV, which is my YouTube channel. Um, as you probably know, YouTube is a great space for commenting and chatting and interacting with people. So I quite often get suggestions from viewers from readers of the blog at techgadgetscanada.com who will say, you know, I've been, I've been dying to check out this product and I haven't seen you review it. And I, I really want your take on it. So, you know, if you could put it on your list and, and check it out if you have the opportunity. And I love getting those suggestions because quite often my audience is able to enlighten me about a gadget that I either maybe haven't heard of or didn't realize um, was popular and people really want to know more about it. Hmm. Interesting. Now, how long is your list of things that you have not gotten to? Yet? <laughs> Let me see if I can. There's, there's a whole list here, Marv. It's pages long. Oh my God. And color coded. <laughs> and color coded spreadsheets. It's, um, it's quite long and I, I sort of keep a running list of things and I'll peck away at, you know, at different things. And, you know, sometimes brands will reach out to me and want to partner on something or they've got a new product that they have coming out and, and they'll either want to ship it to me or sometimes packages just arrive at my door sometimes. So it's nice to be surprised. Okay. That's when you know you've made it. That's why I say you're a YouTube celebrity, because if, if companies are just sending you stuff, you're somebody. <laughs> Well, that's, I'm flattered. I have uh, some relationships as well now because I've been doing this for, for several years. There are plenty of PR companies out there um, that will, you know, that, that have my address and can send me stuff and, and know sort of the things that I'm interested in or would like to review. I am a major sucker for any kind of smart home lighting gadgets. So smart light bulbs, LED strip lighting, ambient, you know, rechargeable lighting, a anything in the smart lighting vein, I just think it's fantastic. And I'm always up for trying some of that out. Well, so that was one of the reasons when I saw your show and saw your clips. So you do the things that I don't do. Because like I said, I don't have gadgets in my house. Uh, we barely have Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> that's just so that we can have our phones and our tablets accessible and your but the podcast is at the office in the studio. So that's a, I, I, I separate church and state in that way. <laughs> smart, smart. So, you know, when, when you hear tech gadgets, Canada, you know, Canada, most people are going to, Oh, it's a techie show, but it's not just about, you know, tech tech as we know it. You're, you're doing home appliances and I mean, you know, fans, hair mm -hmm. blowers and all that stuff. Yeah, it's it's definitely evolved in the last few years. I had sort of a hard and fast rule when I first started out that it had to be very techy, whatever I was going to review, and it had to, you know, have a connectivity component. And what I found over the years is that people are looking for that 
trustworthy, I guess, but, you know, realistic, real experience of a review of all kinds of gadgets. So particularly during the pandemic, when a lot of folks were doing online shopping and online Amazon orders, I was getting lots of requests for things that weren't necessarily connected or Wi-Fi um, Wi Fi enabled, but they wanted to know how they were. And I'm, I'm super flattered that they trusted me enough to ask me to, to do that testing and provide that evaluation for them. And I've been expanding what I've been reviewing a little bit over the last few years, for sure. All right. Well, Aaron, I do appreciate you coming on the show today. We are going to talk again. And for people that are watching, uh, I am putting her YouTube channel on the screen there i've put it in the chat for those of you that are listening by audio it will be in the show notes youtube.com slash at aaron lawrence tv i don't know how the videos got on the end there hi my fat thumb <laughs> as, as long as they search aaron lawrence tv they'll be able to find me and i i hope to see a lot of your viewers and listeners there as well all right well aaron hope you have a well you guys don't celebrate thanksgiving up there do you we already did marv you already did? We, we're first. What do you mean you're first? Canadian Thanksgiving happened already. It happened in October. Okay, we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> on, on the Next podcast. How do I not know you guys have Thanksgiving in October? So. Canadian Thanksgiving. There's, right. we, we both learned things today, Marv. We did. And hopefully the audience learned. did too. I, I led a sheltered life growing up, so I always <laughs> It's one of the reasons I do these podcasts. <laughs> Marv, it's been super awesome being on here. I want to thank you for extending the invitation. It's been really right. great to chat with you and, and hopefully help out your audience here on Black Friday. All right. Thanks for coming on and we'll chat again soon. You bet. All right. Aaron Lawrence, Tech Gadgets Canada. Thank you for hopping on the show. All right. We're going to do a quick transition. Our, we have found Eric Pinto. He is in the green room. I just want to let you know that this is the show where literally we just kind of hang out here and chat. And it is a show where I do formally ask that you support the podcast by going to itbusinesspodcast.com or unclemarv.com, clicking on that Amazon link. And any purchases that you make for Black Friday or Cyber Monday, a uh, portion of that will come back to the show and helps us putting out uh, great content and stuff like that. So either of the podcast links you can do there. So, all right, let us bring in my friend, Mr. Eric Pinto, Sock Sodder. Eric, how are you? I'm great. How are you, man? I am good as well. So, Eric, uh, for my listeners and viewers, that uh, people that don't know you, you are, where's my sheet here, the uh, Senior Director. Senior uh, Director, that's what, they, that's what they call me. Yep. Uh, Sock Soda is a complete cybersecurity platform built for small to mid-sized businesses and backed by a U.S.-based 24-7 security operations center. Uh, just want to let right. people know who you are. We're not going to talk about that today. because Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about Sock Soda or security today at all. <laughs> it's the holiday. It is. I'm great, man. It's, it's, it's the holiday. You know, I've got my basic cup of coffee here. You be <laughs> so you you were watching earlier. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You know? That's why I, I was late because I was trying to get my Keurig to to make one cup of of black coffee and, and call it a day. <laughs> Meanwhile, Aaron's like whipping up this, you know, black double <laughs> old man <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> so. I, I was I was I was I was watching I was watching and, and I was thinking about it and now I was drinking my coffee I was like man I am basic AF as the kids would say because uh, <laughs> this is just coffee I don't even know what kind of coffee it is but I do appreciate that you get yours from Publix which is a a great I, a grocery I store do. down your way yep I do so Eric last year when we were on the show we had uh, some things that we had talked about we talked about the the power stations which were big yeah. air fryers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we did not exchange a list. No script. Uh, no no script are, on this one. We are flying flying blind here. So what do you have this year that uh, catches your eye? Well, I thought maybe what we could, what we should do, because I was thinking about this, because I, I don't have a list, and I've actually not paid any attention to, to what's, uh, <laughs> what's on sale. So, you know, I was, I was watching her list, which I – 
you know, that, that frame TV yeah. uh, looks pretty interesting. Uh, what does that go for? Did we get a price on that? Um, I think it was like 1300 on Amazon. Let's go ahead and make sure you got to have an affiliate link. Uncle Margo will have an affiliate link for, for that, that purchase on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me go back. Make sure we get that. There's some there's some good points there for you. But yes. uh but uh yeah, 1300 is a little rich for my blood. I think I buy the uh I normally go to Black Friday and get the uh 399 299 55-inch Walmart special every year. <laughs> I've got more TVs than I know what to do with at this point. The funny thing about that is I'm sorry, it is oh, there is a 19% drop in price. So let me quickly bring that up here on the screen, and I will share that. And it is only click, click, click. <laughs> so where is it? Uh, just do screen two. Uh, the 55-inch is currently on Amazon for 1135 11000 or 1100 1100 one thousand one hundred thirty-five dollars and ninety-eight. Oh, that's seconds. not bad. That's not no, bad at all. No. So we bought our seventy-five inch for ten ninety-nine. Yeah. So the seventy-five inch frame TV, two thousand and ninety-six dollars and ninety-eight cents. Yeah, that's so getting the, up there, but it's, but it's not. That's not terrible. I mean, eleven hundred bucks for for a good size TV. You know, and, and I think that type of TV, you probably aren't. You probably aren't doing the seventy-five, right? You're you're getting a smaller one. You're putting it in, you know, your living room, and and you're 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 imitating a piece of art, right? So, well, I did, yeah, I didn't ask her about the size that she had, but thinking about it, if you had it on your wall, and it was just a painting, the big one would be nice. But if you've got it with a whole bunch of other pictures, and you've right. got you know a twelve by sixteen or eight and a half by eleven, this thing is going to dwarf that. So. Right, right. That's what I'm thinking. Like a seventy-something inch, you know, it seems like it'd, it'd, it'd almost be too big, right? So, for for eleven, twelve hundred bucks for, you know, a good size living room TV that can also, you know, look like a piece of art or look like a, you know, a slightly moving window. I, I, I think that's 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 priced well below what I thought it was. I thought I thought you were gonna say it was like, you know, five grand. <laughs> yeah, but a fifty-five inch for eleven hundred dollars, doable. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, because kind of, it's it's also your artwork too, right? So yeah. it's both. Yeah, and it's also a good size for a living room. I certainly, I was trying not to go bigger than a fifty-five. That's what we had, and she just right. kept thinking we we've got to do bigger. And I'm like, oh. so, wait, wait. So the wife, so the wife actually, the missus pushed you to get the larger he, one. That's usually did. the op the the opposite. Yes, it was this. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a whole nother story about how that happened, because at first she was, you know, didn't want to spend the money on a TV, thought I was nuts. Sure. And of course, I wanted it for the football and the movies and stuff. And then she got it and she's like, oh, and then, of course, here's what happens. She's, she gets envy. Uh, and hopefully she won't watch this whole show to get to this point. No, no, we, we need her to watch the show. I need you to talk about this later on in the house. She sees that they're out there, that people have bigger and better, and she thinks that, you know, she thinks that the day job makes enough money that, well, we can afford that, can't we? <laughs> I mean, you, you can, though. You got it. You got it, Marv. I can afford it. <laughs> just because you can do a thing doesn't mean you should do a thing. <laughs> this will be the time where I remind you again that I have a 60-inch Walmart brand on brand a Roku TV upstairs that cost me uh, maybe 400 bucks. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! All right, so. all right. So so let's do this. Why don't we? Why don't we? You got the the the, the keys all dialed up there. Why don't yeah. we pull up some of the some of the every man everyday man specials that they've got on on either Walmart or. Or, or Best Buy or something like that, or or even Amazon. Okay, well, do you have a? You're gonna tell me what to pull up or? <laughs> no, like, no, I'm saying they, they, they're all over the place. Just pull up, pull, pull up a list, man. Pull up a list. I, well, I want to talk about some everyday man specials. Okay, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to we had a site last year, uh, BlackFriday.com. Yep. Which kind of is the culmination of all. The different sites so let me bring that up mm -hmm. and we'll go with there so there, there it is there we go uh, blackfriday.com 
And yep. this is a site. So if you're looking for a place to go other than Amazon, uh, Walmart is there, Target, Kohl's, Macy's. So all of these places will have their list of Black Friday deals. So you mentioned Walmart. So let's click on the Walmart Black Friday and see what they have. And look, there it is. Uh, a TCL, cheap brand, 65-inch 4K UHDP Roku Smart TV for $228. Can I order it online or do I have to go and fight the crowds at the store? Well, if you click on details here, there's a get deal. So it looks like you can go right to Walmart, check availability nearby. Apparently, well, this is not available in Jupiter, and I'm not in Jupiter. So <laughs> uh, so it looks like you can you know, figure out where you can get it. Now, bad choice we picked there because it's not available at any place. So I don't think this one will ship. It doesn't look like so it's got a shipping option. So, Marv, are you the type of person, if you saw the the extra special deal that, that, that was only available at 5 a.m. on Friday morning, are, are you going? No. N never. Never. No, right? Never, never have I gotten up early to go shopping. Oh, oh my mom. My mom, will, she loves this site, by the way, this BlackFriday.com. And, she, and she's already started sending me the notices. Uh, you know, everything from, you know, redundancy, right? So, air fryer. Air Fryer Two, <laughs> another TV, another another iPad. Uh, so, she's she's already she's already gone through it, and she's prepared to get up at either get up from the table tomorrow evening at at six or seven, and uh, and, and be the first in the door tomorrow night, or uh, or or Friday morning at whatever time they they, they launch. So my family, ready. I go to my mom's for Thanksgiving. So I, I take Kim and, and we head up there and then my sisters are there and mm -hmm. they started this thing where they would go shopping Friday morning. Now they would never go at 5 a.m. So they'd get up at, you know, seven or eight and go and they would always mm -hmm. be late. But then they yeah, started they're late. They're late at that point. <laughs> but then they started doing this thing where they would find out what stores were open thursday night and that's go. what i'm saying that yes that, get up you push it back from the table and now you're going on thursday night no nah, not me i will check online and see what can be delivered or if it's super good and it's only available i'll reserve it and go pick it up curbside i am not you going can't to you can't do that on the best deals though they, they don't allow that they you know the whole <laughs> idea is to get to get uncle marvin in the door uh, and they've only got five of those, you know, special deals. Yeah, well, and uh, I miss and out. Maybe you'll you'll grab you'll grab the second special deal. I miss out. Then I go to my Shop Savvy app, and you know, I mark it and save it and see when the next time it's on sale, and then I'll get it. All right. So what 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 do they seem to be pushing this year? What are what are the seems what are the big all, go tos? Seems to be all TV and electronics, except for yeah. So here we go again. It, 65 inch 4K Roku. Now, um, this we went to Target. Target. I'm, you know what? I never shop at Target. Let's not go there. Let's go back to the Best Buy, which is where a lot of us go. So, again, the TV is $79. What is as that? low as, let's see, that's a 24 inch. Who buys 24 inch TVs? I For my kitchen. I, I'm not. Okay, we, I'm now thinking. We, let me pull up the Best Buy. I need that. that. We had to buy ours. Is a so we did 32 in the kitchen, and we got 40 for the guest bedroom. 24 seems too small. No, for the kitchen, I think it's because it'll go like under counter. It'll go under cabinet. Oh, ours. Okay, under cabinet. See, we mounted ours. We had uh, space on the wall where we could mount it, and we got the the mount that comes out and you can swivel it back and uh, forth. So we could watch it while she's in the kitchen or at the dining room table. That sounds like a lot of commitment. Listen, you're married. <laughs> sounds like a lot of commitment. <laughs> you know what that means? <laughs> the wife's like, I want a TV in the kitchen. I'm like, we got five TVs in the rest of the house. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else? So TVs are, are the still big. It's always TVs, though. Of course it is. 
So let's go into let's go where we can go by category. So in Best Buy, so Apple gifts, unique. Let's go to see what the unique gifts are on Amazon or Walmart. And my Comcastic. So well, everyone's home this week. Yep. Yeah. So there is a hatch restore sound machine. Well, that looks interesting. What is that? Oh, look at this. A premier T1 turntable system. Do you even have LPs? Uh, well, as a as a uh, former DJ, I've I've still got crates of records and and, and plenty of look yeah, at that. of all of it. That is I don't have my turn. I don't actually don't have my turntables anymore. Um, but I've got I still got the records. And this is actually Victrola. Look at that. Oh, oh. So now. so all right. So so this is really hipster though, right? So now you're gonna get this. You're you're gonna get you're gonna get you know how many records are you buying, Marv? Do you do you, do you have the records or now you're gonna have to go out and and buy you know thirty records? No, and then I don't. you think. No, I, I mean, so how, what I are we doing know, with this with this thing? I don't even know what happened to mine. And I had, you know, both the 45s and the 33 and a thirds. Um, but, you know, when I was growing up, we instantly were going to cassette tape. And uh, the the Sony Walkmans and stuff like that. And then we went to oh, yeah. CDs and DVDs. So I don't I. I wouldn't have had a lot of LPs, but it was just, I mean, but that's a cool thing to have. Well, I, I that's what I'm saying. It, it seems cool. Like you would have it, you would have it in your New York loft apartment. It's over in the corner. And when people come over, you put on, you know, I don't know, some, some old seventies record, but then what? <laughs> I, I, I like to, I like to listen to too much music, man. I, I'd have to still go to Spotify and change like nine times. Right. So here's something that came out. I am seeing more and more of these electric scooters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know, we're not only old school, but we're we're not young enough to really have these things. Although I've seen a couple of the blue hairs down here on these things. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, are you that seeing thing, by you these electric yeah, scooters? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they're getting they're getting faster, right? So, um, you, you know, I have actually I have one like parked right in front of me, the one of the older ones that when my kid was real young, uh -huh. um, it, it it was like twelve volt or maybe eighteen volt. It it, it wasn't very fast, uh, you know, maybe set eight eight miles an hour or something like that. But the new ones are very quick, and obviously you've seen them in the cities. But that that thing right there is giving me Datocon twenty nineteen vibes because it was in Santa, it was in uh. Uh, we're, it was in uh, California and San Diego and everyone from the conference was taking these scooters around uh, in, in sort of the entertainment district and uh, I, I don't know three, four, ten people were, uh, were sent to the hospital and coming back scratched up. Oh my. Well this one looks like it would do it because this uh, 14 miles an hour Yep. with a yep, 16 yep, yep. mile operating range. So, oh, that, so that's 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 not bad. That's not bad yeah. for that for that type of money. You figure in the neighborhood. You know, I don't. My neighborhood is one of those neighborhoods where every family or every third family has a golf cart. There's no golf course, mind you, <laughs> but but there but there's a, there's no shortage of golf carts around my neighborhood, and they all do 15, 20 miles an hour. So uh, that thing would keep up with the with the golf cart community uh, that that I live in. Now, are, are are you guys on the golf cart uh, path? You, you, will you be getting one yourself soon? I thought of, I thought about it. I, I went I went to the e bike. I think we talked about this last year. So I have the uh, Super seventy three e bike instead, um, and, and 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 that does twenty twenty five miles an hour itself. So uh, I I went around the golf carts and, and went right to the e bike. Hmm. So I'm trying to poke around. I'm trying to see where. So I don't know. Well, here's a, let's see. It looks like a crock pot. And then it, of course, didn't go anywhere near kitchen appliances. So here's a Breville smart oven. So Aaron was talking about. I had that, that one. one. You have this one? Yeah, the Breville. Yeah. Okay. And now it looks like an oversized toaster oven. It it is, but I will I will tell you this. I use the Breville oven 
Shout out Breville. Uh, that one is yeah, that's yeah, that's the same one. Uh, I used the, the uh, that oven more than I use the regular oven. I, I would say ninety percent of the time I cook food in that oven. Okay, so I'm looking at the list of things that it has on the screen. Toast, bagel, broil, bake, roast, warm, pizza, proof, air fry. Of course, we talked about that. Reheat, cookies, slow cook, and dehydrate. Yep. That so that, so that's a little bit newer than mine. So mine doesn't have the air fry built in. So I separately have the air fryer next to it, which I don't use very often. But the, uh, the reason why these are, these are awesome, a couple of reasons. One, uh, the, the speed of heating up, right? So my, my – my traditional oven, you know, it's 20 minutes to get to 350, right? It, it, it takes a it takes a good amount of time to get to preheat, You're where right. that thing takes take, that thing takes two and a half minutes. You should get a gas stove, or a gas stove is fast. I know, or I have a gas stove. Actually, oh, is it real gas? It shouldn't take that long to heat up. It takes it takes that long. It takes it takes quite. Maybe, maybe it's electric stove and gas cooktop. Maybe that's what uh, it is. Okay, it may be that. I don't know, but uh, it takes forever. Right. <laughs> it takes forever. Where this thing is super quick. So if you just you know if you're just cooking something or, or certainly like I use this more than I use the microwave. So instead of the microwave, instead of the big oven, you use this thing, and you're you know it heats up really quick. Um, you know with the uh, it's got like an air circulation uh, deal. So I guess maybe it does have the air fryer built in. Um, but when you turn that on, you get your food is, is heated up, you know, almost as quick as the microwave without it being in the microwave. So here's what I'm looking for in our next purchase. So let me see if I'll do a quick search here. So they, they make them with the French oven doors. And you can uh, actually do the double cooking where you can cook multiple things at the same time uh does this allow for that no no i, I don't i don't cook more than one thing at the same time that seems I, again basic af man i, I just <laughs> just try, just trying to reheat this these, these chicken nuggets man i'm a, well, I'm so a simple i'm a where, simple man here's where it started so ninja is a company mm -hmm. that goes out and usually i i used to think of ninja as like the copy company or the, the copycat company. So if somebody came out with a great idea, Ninja would come around a year or two later and do a you know generic knockoff of it. A less but, expensive version of it typically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right, you're right. So this one I saw maybe two years ago, but I haven't uh, done enough research on it. But it's got the two baskets where you can... That's the air fryer, though, right? Air fryer, yeah. It's the air fryer okay. only. But you can do two separate things at once. So, you know, for us, like, we do wings and fries all the time for football games and stuff. So we could do them at the same time. Right now, she's got to pull out two different air fryers uh, where this oh. one do one. So this can, is... Can't just put it all in the same... I guess you... you the fries won't take as the fries are take less time than the than the wings. No, they're right? different, and you don't, they're not layered to where they're separated. So, um, and cooking if you cook the wings first and then the fries, then by the time you finish the fries, the wings are cold, and you know that sort of thing. So that's why we ended up getting two air fryers so we can cook stuff and have them done at relatively the same. Time. Do you use you? So you use your air fryer? Oh yeah. This thing sits on the countertop. It's no, been it, used. No, we've got it's a, been we've used got a, three times in, th in in six months. No, Maybe. we've got we've got an appliance rack in our garage, which is right now. So, literally, at least twice a week, she goes out and brings them in uh, on the countertop. So we don't have a ton of countertop space, so we can't leave them out. And I'm trying to. One of the reasons we're having this webathon is to support the show and help me redo my kitchen. <laughs> so, so we can get more counter space. Use, use your affiliate awesome. links. We got to be go back to Amazon so people can see your affiliate links. That's, I'm on Amazon. So And I'm writing down this uh, Ninja stuff because I don't have a link right here, but I'm going to create links and put those in the show. But there is the and I, uh, French oven... Uh, Let's see, air fryer, toaster. Oh, okay. This is um, so. This is one of them. 
Oh, so this okay. one's by Oster, and I think Emerald has one and some others have one where it is similar to your Breville, where it's the multifunction cooker, but it's got the French door, so it's got more inside space. Oh. And here they've got trays where they're cooking two pizzas at once. Um, here they've okay. got it. See, it's extra large, so you can do your meats and potatoes on top, your vegetables down below. So that's kind of where we're, or I'm moving towards. Uh, she's not on board yet. <laughs> so, but I'm trying to do my research there. Well, maybe she likes having the two separate units in, in the size that you get with the two separate units. Well, remember, she is a traditional cooker. So she's used to, you know, she wants, she wanted a double oven. That's the type mm. of cooker she is. So she's got, you know, pans and stuff going in two different ovens, plus the cooktop. And, you know, bottom line is my kitchen is too small for her. So does this thing, so with the two levels, can you do two different temperatures? It seems, it seems complicated. I don't think you can do the two different temperatures. Like the, the I, air fryer. The, nin the, ninja one, the ninja one does do, do two different temperatures. Yes, the air like fryer because you've got two separate baskets and you can control two different sides. This is a single unit, but I think if you time it, I think there's ways that you can do – say I need to find one that has the, the front panel that you can see where it will – let me – I'll start the video and see how that goes. Yeah, that was a waste. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's tie this back in though. So, uh, can I, th I think if, if I'm if I'm in tune with your audience, I don't know that I don't know that they're debating on air fryers. Uh, how <laughs> how are we preparing our turkeys this year? Are, are you cooking? Me, no. <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, are, are you fry? You know, do you, have you ever done the turkey? Has that ever been your thing, Uncle Marv? No, it is not. So, in my family. The uh, matriarch of the family, the queen bee, my mom, has cooked Thanksgiving forever. Okay. And is not ready to give that up. Has so, anyone tried to like get in there and, and, and uh, you know and bring and bring the ham or bring bring a, a staple so, item? So here's what's happened in recent years. She has allocated out what she will allow people to bring. Like Kim is in charge of desserts. And she's in charge this year of breakfast the Friday after. Desserts so and breakfast. Yes. Yeah, so okay, this okay. is what my mom would do the entire weekend. And when I say weekend, for me, it's we get in Thursday around lunchtime. We have the afternoon dinner. We have the leftovers. And then Friday morning, we eat breakfast. And then I boogie out. <laughs> right. So, um, right. No, I got you. But she is now letting people now part of it is this year because of her cancer. So she's not oh. as able, you know, she's not healthy enough to move around and do all the cooking and stuff. So she is starting to let go of that. But in years past, no, you didn't. She took care of all of the cooking of the main thing. Uh, she oven roasts or bakes or whatever the, the turkey. And we have all of the traditional sides and stuff. And I think I think uh, Kim did a casserole one year, and I think it was well received. And Mom said, "Okay, you can't bring the casserole anymore because you can't outdo me." <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> it was well received, maybe yeah. too well received. Too well received, yes. It, it, it got too many accolades on the on the table, and uh, and Mom said, uh, "No, no, yeah. no, no." Move that, and and, and maybe because I was thinking desserts and breakfast the next day, you know that if I if, if I thought about how you know sort of the hierarchy of, of of the meal at least in my family that would rank pretty low. That would be like that's almost like like when they when they tell me oh yeah just bring um bring soda and, and rolls yeah bring some ice yeah, yeah yeah hey Eric we need ice soda rolls that's it yeah <laughs> you know which, which which I take as a slight. I can make some stuff. Yeah. So in our family, so the, the, here's what's easy about it. So my sisters can't cook. So I can cook a little, but Kim cooks better than me. So it's really between my mom and Kim. Oh, boy. And so that's what happens. So mom's not letting that up. 
but I have a feeling that there will be a time where Kim will start to do more because um, we're basically next in line in the hierarchy. Now, Kim does, I think it works out. So as soon as she, we get back from Thanksgiving, she's got to start her cooking for Christmas because her family does Christmas early. So the second weekend in December, we go up to Georgia and her mm-hmm. family meets there and she'll, she's got to cook the whole week before to take stuff up. And then she cooks in the cabin and that's her deal. In and a I'm cabin. Telling, You're in a cabin. Well, we're in a cabin in the woods. Yes. Tell me about this cabin in the woods, Marv. What are you guys well, doing here? You, you don't seem like a, much of a camper. It's what's well, not a camping cabin, not that type of cabin. It's a nice, ca- it's a regular, it's a home, but it's up in, um, what's it called? Talking Rock, Georgia. And okay. it literally is up the side of a mountain. It's a half mile up through wine. I mean, you can't take a, you know, a truck up there. Um, so her, my brother-in-law, her brother, they used to go to Canada all the time. They uh, came as from Cleveland area, Ohio. And they would go up to Canada for the summers. Part of their family owned this camp. So the camp has been sold and gone. And of course, everybody's moved away. And her brother wanted to recreate that type of experience. And he is a master carpenter and can pretty much build and refurb, you know, anything house related. So he found this cheap, cheap cabin for sale, gutted it, and has literally built it up from the studs. And he wants it to be the gathering place. And right now it's just kind of equidistant for everybody. So the sister-in-law from Carolina comes over. Uh, Kim's dad and son fly down from Ohio. Kim drives up. Um, All of their, uh, our nieces and nephews on that side still live in the Georgia area. So they all come up to the cabin. There's probably, I think this year there's going to be like 18 people. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. All of them will stay at the cabin, but I mean, it's they, they're trying to make it to where they're going to have you know, a lot of people be able to stay. The cabin itself, I think, see, uh, sleeps 15. Uh, there was a um, like a side house built. They call it the honeymoon suite um, or the baby maker that um, where it's just enough for, you know, a couple to go over there and sure. um, we're celebrating a baby that was born this year and the other child is pregnant as well. So that's why I call it the baby maker, but it's <laughs> this mountain in the cabin and they go up and Kim goes up for a, uh, a whole week and she'll go up there. Cause you know, you, for that many people, you had to cook and, you know, open the cabin and, and do all that stuff. We go up there and we play cornhole. I'll, I'll show you, we'll do a video. I think we're doing a podcast from the cabin this year, but that's going to be on the uncle Marv.com site. And uh, but we yeah, I'm not familiar with the Uncle Marv.com site. What what happens over there? Marv Marv late night or what? Separation of church and state. So so but yeah, I'll have uh, some introductions. I'll we'll do some crossovers. People will see Uncle Marv and we'll do all that. So that's the cabin. So we go up there, she's up there. I think she's up there a week and a half this year. I'll fly in. So I fly in on Friday. I see my friends and stuff in the area, then I go up to the cabin Friday afternoon. And then I leave out Sunday. All right. And we have, oh, we share we do gifts. We do we do gifts uh, ahead of time. So that's another thing is you know we got to do the early shopping. And Kim goes up there with a car full of gifts for all of her family and nephews and sons. Well, let me apologize to Kim for being absolutely zero help in 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 your <laughs> uh, in your Thanksgiving uh, Black Friday pre sale discovery day. Uh, cause I didn't look this year, <laughs> but, um, but you know, I, I will keep you posted. Uh, if I find anything good, if I, if I get out in the trenches with mom tomorrow or Thursday, Friday, I won't, but maybe <laughs> I've good. I've been with her before and, and done the 5 a.m. Fl- uh, fights before. Uh, but if she drags me out for that, I'll let you know. Um, and, uh, let me know what, what you pick up this year. All right. Now let me ask you, do you help with the cooking? On Thanksgiving? Yeah, so so I so I cook. I cook quite a bit, right? So um normally you I will deep f- fry because that's I see those. No, I've things. never I've never done the fried turkey. Um I normally smoke the turkey. So um it, it's normally a uh, get up around four AM on 
you know, you, you brine the turkey the night before in, in, in the salt bath and your spices and everything else. And um, then, then take it out, dry it out and get it on the smoker around 4 a.m., uh, maybe 5 a.m. And uh, it'll smoke through till probably 10 or 11 in the, in the morning. Uh, and then you kind of check it. If it's ready, then you pull it off. If not, you know, you give it, give it time. The smoke's done when the smoke's done. But, uh, you know, four, five, six hours on the smoke. And uh, pull it off, and then by the time, then I'll do a mac and cheese. Typically, I'll do some greens, and everyone else brings other stuff, and and that's Thanksgiving. That's the way it normally is. Uh, this year, I'm not doing that, um, and we're going going to my sister. She's also not doing that, so I believe she's ordered and catered the entire thing. Oh, and uh, so I'm looking. That's not right. <laughs> she has. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so apparently we've got the bird, the uh, the sides, and everything being uh, being catered in. I am still doing my mac and cheese, so I'll be bringing that, uh, and uh, and that'll be Thanksgiving. Interesting. Yep. All right. So I am going to do one last thing here as we start to end out the show here. Let me do another quick link here. So if People are just joining the video late and you're wondering what we're doing. This is my Black Friday preview show that we started a couple of years ago and is my webathon to kind of get people to maybe contribute to the show. You're all out doing your shopping and buying stuff anyway. Why not buy using an Amazon link where you can support the podcast? I don't really ask for much. We don't do a huge subscriber thing or I don't have a ton of sponsors. I do have some, but you know, we can always do more and make the show better. So I just put another link in the note there, uh, the chat room for YouTube, the Facebook and Twitter. And I've got a link here to the Amazon Black Friday page. So anytime you click that link and then do your shopping. I suggest you save it as a favorite on your browser. And that way, anytime you go back, those future purchases will also come to the show. It's not a lot, folks. Don't think I'm getting rich off. It's like half a percent for some stuff, 1% for others. Um, if they're having a you know big old deal, it might be 2%. So go out and buy that 55-inch uh, frame TV from Samsung and uh, make it worth it there. Yeah, splurge for the 75-inch. So this here, so the Black Friday, yeah, it says it starts tomorrow, but you guys know there have been Black Friday deals the entire month of November. And I, I see, I see another power station there. Those are still, yeah. if you haven't gotten one of those, you, you still need to think about that uh, for your house. Those are they're fantastic. Uh, yeah. That's a little small one. That's a little small one there, but uh, I can't see the price. It looks like it's probably inexpensive. It says only eighty four bucks. So Jack, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a real small one. Jackery is the the well known name for power stations. They yes. had a, a pretty big deal that I saw. Uh, let's see what they've got here. So With here's power one for outages and everything else. That yeah. one's a great one. That one's a great one. The two ninety nine sized one. It you know uh, it, is a good one for just powering your basic stuff. I I normally say if you if you're getting one, buy the one that's five hundred watt to a thousand watt um is 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 sort of the the best sort of starting ground i think the 500 watt one is sort of the best starting ground ground uh but it you know power outages everything else this is the time of year where you know you just want to keep a light on and and and, and feel comfortable when, when when things go awry so these, these things are, are great are great for just portable power so i use them when i do my on on-site podcast if i'm out you know on location at a conference or stuff i'm bringing my power station because as you can see, it's got not only a regular AC outlet, it's got USB plugs that I can power my tablets and other stuff while I'm there. And, and these have multiple ways of charging. So you can charge with a wall outlet. You can charge from your car. So while you're driving on location somewhere, you can charge. And of course, you can get a solar panel if yep. you happen to be out camping like these people here. And uh, you were making fun of camping, Eric. Um, no, I wasn't making fun. I, I, I'm an avid camper. That's what that's what I are. do. I'll be I'll be I'll be four days after the day after Christmas through the 31st. I'll be in 
uh, you know, Galveston Island, uh, you know, on a beach uh, for four or five days. Now, is it true camping in a tent? In a tent. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, my power station, two solar panels, and my right. e-bike. That's what I. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna have your e-bike on a camping trip. I, I I bring it every time. Really? Nice. That's my mode right. of transport. What mode of transport around the around the, the the woods and the campsite? Now, is it is it is it a park where there's also like RVs and those types? Yeah, of Yeah, the other yeah on the other side of the park they've got uh, other side of the state it's state park Galveston Island State Park. So Galveston Island's you know south of Houston here in Texas, um, and uh, the other side of the park will have full hookups and RVs. And then where where we are, it's just um, I think there's some electrical, but it's it's really just basic, just primitive camping. Okay. And just for the record, we have a tent. We probably bought it five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. It's never been taken out of the package. Ah, come on, Marv. <laughs> come on, Marv. Get out there. <laughs> well, Marv, this has been great. I got, I, got, I, got a, I got a boogie. This has been great. All right, uh, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, we see, you, your, see um, you in the new year. See you in the new year, and we'll be back uh, back to talking tech as we go. So All thanks right. a lot, Eric from Sox Soder. Take care, right, man. Sir. Bye-bye. All right. Well, there you have it. Eric's Pinto uh, closing out the show. And I want to say thank you to Aaron Lawrence for coming on earlier. And Dan Klimke from Net Ally, the show sponsor. So uh, if you're watching, I will be updating the YouTube page with some of the links that we did not get in the show items that we talked about. So if you want to go take a look at them and click on the link, if you decide to make a purchase or something that you purchase later on, um, if you get to there and you're like, ah, I don't like that. Let me go look at some other stuff. Anything that you purchase using the link will, would be a uh, commission to the show. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Uh, whether you're watching live or listening later, thank you very much. We will be getting ready to close out 2022 for the podcast. So we'll have some great shows coming up both on the IT Business Podcast on, and Uncle Marv. So check those sites uh, to see what's coming up. That is going to do it for this year. We're going to end out the show here with a quick little outro video. I want to say thank you for joining us. I hope that you will go to the websites and subscribe or follow the show so that you can catch them anytime in your podcatcher, whether it's Apple or Google or any of the podcatchers. You can click a follow button on YouTube, Facebook, and even Twitch now as we get started and follow the show. Even when we release audio-only versions, you'll be able to find out what's happening both with the tech world and with Uncle Marv and the family. That's going to do it for now. I will see you again after the holiday. I hope that you have a good Thanksgiving, have a good Friday, and stay safe. And until next time, holla. <laughs>